Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Greetings of peace to your viewers and welcome to another episode of She in Islam. In Ramadan Kareem, inshallah, we're hoping that Ramadan is going well for you, that fasting is not too difficult and that you're getting more out of your fast than just being hungry and thirsty, but that you're nurturing your spirit as well. And that's part of our mission with this show, inshallah, to give you something to inspire you for this month, inshallah, and past this month as well. I would like to welcome my dear friend and sister, Karen Atkins. Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum How are you? Suzanne. Fine. Alhamdulillah. It's nice to have you on the show. Thank, Thank you for you so being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Karen has her master's degree in foreign languages with a specification in TESOL, which is teaching English to speakers of other languages. And she's an educator in Kuwait, and you've been in Kuwait for many, many years, I think. How long have you been in Kuwait? Well, I've been in Kuwait for 35 years. MashaAllah, for 35 years. So yeah. this is home to you, right? Right. It's, a, it's my second home. Right. But you're not originally from, from Kuwait. No, you're I'm from... not originally from Kuwait. I'm originally from Ohio in the United States. Mm -hmm. And uh, I came here after marrying my husband, mm -hmm. uh, who is Kuwaiti. And uh, I settled here and had a, a home. You had your family here. Yes, and but I was uh, originally uh, raised Christian. Right. So that uh, when I came here, I was it was all new to me, the society and the, how, how they were expected to dress and everything I like remember, that. you know, I mean, <laughs> I, I know you from so long ago, yes. you know, been yes. sisters for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I remember in the beginning a little bit of your struggle, your resistance to, um, to Islam well, and the culture. I mean, it's natural, you were new to it, right? So right. what would bring a Western woman, a person who's free thinking to this so-called oppress, you know, women, religion that oppresses women. Well, in, in well I didn't uh, find any uh, oppression in Islam, but uh, whenever I would, I, I would, my husband wanted me to become Muslim, but he didn't force me to become Muslim. Right, of And I, I found an interest in uh, attending uh, Islamic classes, especially after my first son was born. And I attended them off and on regularly for about uh, five years mm -hmm. and uh, I was uh, particularly struck by Islam you know I would raise my objections to it but I would also find answers in I remember you used our, to have a lot teacher, of questions Zainab's right? uh, Ashri's uh, yes. explanations and everything mm -hmm. like that because I was raised uh, Christian I was uh, what you call I already believed in God and uh, his oneness. I, I was uh, part of a non-denominational group when I was growing mm -hmm. up so that uh, when um, they said uh, there is no trinity, of course I already believed in that. But mm -hmm. uh, getting over, you know, that Jesus was less than, you know, he wasn't divine was a little bit more difficult. More difficult. So you didn't believe in the trinity? No, I did not. But you did believe in the divinity of, of Christ, of right. Jesus. Right, <laughs> which is uh, kind, it's of kind of strange paradoxical. right now right. When, yes. you, when you think back about right. it. Right, yes, yes. But we yes. were always taught as uh, Christians that the, uh, the devil would try to move you away from your belief and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So I did have a resistance because uh, I saw my family, it was, uh, they were very good people and everything like that. I was not mistreated by them or anything like that. So then... You had uh, a natural fear, yes. right? Because, I mean, being taught and growing up with this idea that the devil will always try to get you away from this. So right. anybody yes. approaching you, trying to get you away from, or yes. showing you anything else, of course, that would be a, a leftover from, from your growing up, right? right? So, mm -hmm. definitely. so when, whenever I... Uh, my last thing was that I, I believed everything that was uh, told in the, the scriptures in the Quran and everything like that. My last thing was that, oh, then Muhammad is the prophet of God. And of course, when I was told uh, to look to the Bible and see how it said that the prophets, you will know them by their fruits, which means how much they bring of good to the people and everything. And this is what is exactly what the prophet Muhammad, uh, yeah, yeah, 
he gave to mankind, he gave goodness always. You see the fruits, yeah. exactly. So you see the good fruits. Oh, subhanAllah, yeah. I've never heard any of the, of the sisters or brothers on the show say that exactly. Well, that's in the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so the Bible actually led you yes, to Islam. Definitely, yes. SubhanAllah, that's interesting. MashaAllah. Well, we're here today to talk about a very important woman in the history of Islam. And I think our viewers, if they are non-Muslims, will actually be surprised that this particular woman is a very honored woman in Islam, which is Mary, the mother of Jesus, mm -hmm. or as an Arabic, Miriam. Yes, Miriam. And, uh, you know, if we look at the Bible, there is no book or no chapter in the Bible at all, in all 77 some chapters of the Bible. There is none uh, called Jesus, there is none called Miriam, okay, or Mary. So no, none of the Bible, the Bible chapters actually honor Mary or by Jesus, naming a yeah. chapter, or Jesus by right. naming a chapter after. Right. So when you look at the Quran, you see that there is one chapter devoted to her. Uh, I mean, named Miriam, uh, and it's the 19th chapter of the Quran which is uh, just after Surat Al-Kaf, which is uh, chapter 18 mm -hmm. in the Quran. And every Muslim knows uh, Surat so Al-Kaf because they should recite it every, every Friday. Fri right. It's supposed to give you a light today. for the next yeah. week, yes. Right, so right after that, if you want to keep on reading, is uh, Surat so Al-Kaf. Yes. And I think this is probably the, this is the only surah or chapter in the Quran that actually has, is named after a woman. Oh, right? yes, yes. I, I believe so. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, inshallah, we'll be back, inshallah, to learn a little bit more about Maryam, inshallah. In just a minute, we're going to go for a break. Please stay with us, dear viewers. One song can change a moment. One idea can change a world. One step can start a journey, but a prayer can change even the impossible. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to your viewers. With us today is my dear friend, Karen Atkins, and we are talking about Maryam. Maryam, the mother of Isa alayhi salam, or as is known in English, Jesus. So Mary, mother of Christ, Mary of Jesus, and her position and standing in Islam, which is quite unique. Mm -hmm. So you just said that there's a whole chapter after, uh, named after Maryam, um, and there wasn't any chapter in the Bible named either after Maryam or even Jesus alayhi That's salam. Correct, yeah. SubhanAllah. Yes, so what is, what is Maryam's rank in the Quran? Well, she's and has, in Islam. Well, in Islam, she has a very notable place as she is um, the mother of Jesus, which was a virgin birth, and we're told this many times in the Quran, at least three times uh, during her Annunciation. She is uh, her, her. She is above all other women, according to the Quran, and uh, she has uh, different titles in the Quran. One of them is a sister of uh, Aaron. Right, so she daughter, was sister of Aaron, yeah. right? Uh, a daughter of Imran, okay? And this is another chapter in the Quran, uh, Al Imran, where it also speaks of the story of Mary. Not so it's not just mentioned once in the Quran, yes. it's mentioned in several yes. places. Uh, two main places are in the Quran, and one of them is surah, uh, surah, the third surah, or the third chapter of the Quran, which is called Al Imran. Al -Imran. Yes. Okay, there, in this place, it goes through the Annunciation to Mary and the birth of uh, Jesus, and in. Miriam, so, uh, the chapter number 19 of the Quran. It also gives through uh, her annunciation and I think, uh, her birth. So, mashallah, I mean, Miriam being the mother of Jesus. So, who, who do we Muslims? Maybe to clarify, if we have some viewers that are non-Muslim, mm -hmm. who do we do, who do we Muslims think Jesus is? I mean, how does he fall into place with us in our religion? I mean, in Christianity. He could be various things depending on the denominations, right? right. He could be uh -huh. divinity, he could be God or son of God. So what do we 
Well, uh, uh, well, if you look into the Bible, they are, it's already mentioned there that most of the people uh, who say he's son of God, it actually, uh, they are saying it, not Jesus himself. And yes. in fact, in Jesus himself calls himself a son of man. Son of man, exactly. Okay, so he is the son of Mary, which makes him not divine, but uh, a human being. Mm -hmm. and a prophet. A prophet, a right. God. So we honor him highly. Yes, we honor As one him of highly. the most mm -hmm. important prophets mm -hmm. among the five biggest prophets in right. Islam, alhamdulillah. So thus, right. Mary gets her standing yes. as being the mother of that very special prophet right. that came before Muhammad. Uh, Mary came from a family uh, of uh, priests and prophets as the... Uh, so very important background. Oh yes, she very had religious. a very, very uh, uh, prestige in the community that she was in and as being a, a daughter of Imran. This could mean uh, the priests and prophets or it could be actually her father whose name was Imran. Her right. father's name was Imran, her mother's name was Hannah and this is uh, referred to in the Quran itself. And they were a family of priests and prophets, okay? So the, the line of the prophets came from them through them, mm -hmm. okay? Zachariah, who, who we call Zachariah, but in, in the English, but Zachari I will continue saying Zachariah because that's how so it's close said to in, the, in, to in the English. The, yes, it's Zachariah, very close. Zachariah, yes, yes right. Yes, okay. So he was the father of Yahya, which is John the Baptist. John the Baptist, and that Zachariah was her uncle. So uh, Mary and John the Baptist were cousins and uh, Jesus or, and John the Baptist were second cousins or cousins once removed oh, so. from each other. So, so there is a lineage, there is a connection. Mm -hmm. And, and yes. it's surprising that also, you know, subhanAllah, sometimes the, you know, our non-Muslims brothers and sisters, especially our Christian brothers and sisters, often think that we Muslims have nothing to do with you know, no beliefs about Jesus, no beliefs about Mary. John the Baptist even pops up, you know, I mean, yes. in, in the whole narration, in the Quran, even he is mentioned, subhanAllah. So, yes. so there is a lot of links yeah, there between is, Christianity there and Islam. And in fact, uh, John uh, the Baptist, or Yahya, was, uh, is talked about in the two, uh, two chapters before the story of uh, uh, Mary, Mary or uh, and her son Jesus and this is uh, gives us into another uh, side to the story wherein Jesus is not divine but as a creation of Allah which they said be and it is right mm -hmm. also uh, Zachariah's uh, uh, what you call it he was of old age and his wife was barren. barren and we're told this about uh, that his wife was barren about twice in mm -hmm. the Quran and he made okay. dua right so he, he made a prayer to God yeah let me get up to that because right. first we want to talk about the birth of Mary ah, okay because that, that it's, preceded it's also special because it's also talked about in the Quran uh, so in which way is her birth special I mean what her, are, what's her, her birth? birth was special because we're told in the Quran that uh, uh, her mother, Hannah, she uh, prayed to God before she had given birth that her offspring would be uh, uh, dedicated to her service, to the Lord's service, to a God's service. So, so her mom had already had that wish to have her child, mm -hmm. male or female, dedicated to the service well, of God. Well, male or female, she didn't know. Right, of course, exactly. Because they didn't she didn't have, know. Exactly. She didn't no know. No way to tell. But she was expecting to a have a son because she, uh, she was from the lineage both both uh, Imran and her were, so were both a, from the lineage of prophets and of course so she was people, hoping yeah. for a boy right well okay. we'll just be back inshallah with the story of mary's birth and the special circumstances in one minute inshallah please stay with us dear viewers
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi, dear viewers. And we're back with our episode about the mother of Jesus, Mary, or as we say in Arabic, Maryam. And we are with us, our guest. We have with us our guest, Karen, Karen Atkins. So Karen, you were just talking about the miraculous birth of Mary, that her birth had special circumstances as well. So can you just go back like just briefly to the story of Hannah and making that prayer yes, to God? Yes, Hannah was making a prayer that her, her, the child in her womb, which she didn't know if it was male or female, but she assumed it was male. Right. So she was dedicating it to the service of God and hoping that it would be a prophet of uh, God. Right. So she was going, uh, praying to this, and when she gave birth, it says in the Quran, lo, it was a girl, mm. and no, in no wise is the boy like a girl. And so we, mm. we get this understanding that uh, her mother was a little bit disappointed that, or uh, taken aback that it was a girl, not a boy, since she had already dedicated it to the surface of uh, God. And thinking that yeah. a girl possibly couldn't fulfill the right. service. Okay. Exactly right. Yeah. And, but then, uh, she remembered her uh, Allah's uh, what you call it listens to and hears the prayer so she went on and uh, uh, she dedicated the service of her child her, her, her daughter Mary to the service of the temple right. and, and uh, they were it says in another place in um, uh, it says in the Quran in uh, chapter 3 Al Imran that the priests, which, of which Zachariah was a priest in the temple, and we know this from uh, the Bible in Luke, it, it already says that, that Zachariah was uh, a priest in the temple, so he, along with other priests, drew lots to see who would take this girl to, the temple, uh, to their temple, and she would be in the service of whatever was in there. So she grew up in this uh, environment. Very so basically a religious upbringing with very religious and dedicated parents and those parents were worshiping God. Mm -hmm. They weren't idol worshippers. Right. They were worshiping God already. And mm -hmm. so she automatically through her mom's dedication of her child and one her mom wanting to keep her promise to God that she will dedicate the child even though she was a girl then she was put into a temple to, yes. to do service to God yes. and whatever shape that was back then. Mm -hmm. Right, well, it's a big, uh, you know, this this fact that when she dedicated uh, the child to the uh, to God's service, is a, uh, while in the womb, it's a it's a good idea to know that uh, when we uh, plan something, we count our chickens before they're hatched, mm -hmm. as we say. Exactly the same thing with Hannah. She had planned without to have a boy, <laughs> to have a boy and God, but, God is the best of planners. Right, God is the best of planners and it, it, you will see later how her purity and beauty, it just uh, grew in the temple and uh, she was uh, uh, a really good example of a virtuous, uh, chaste girl. And uh, it says in the Quran also that uh, Zachariah, uh, you know, we can just imagine, looked at this uh, girl who was, uh, you know, dedicated and uh, to, the, to the temple, how she was growing and everything like this. Well, he, every, every time that he would come into her chamber to visit her, to see her as he was her, uh, her uncle, mm -hmm. you know, it was quite all right for him to go visit her. Uh, he would find her supplied with uh, food and sustenance, sustenance that was uh, uh, miraculous because he would like go, okay, where did this food come from? Where are you getting this, these fruits and things? And it would be kind of like uh, miraculous because they would be out of season. So he mm. knew that it was miraculous. And she would, she would say, my Lord uh, gives me sustenance. Mm -hmm. God gives sustenance to whom He wills. Okay, so she was getting these uh, these fruits and this food miraculously, and um, it's interesting to note that Zachariah, when he came upon this and he would see this, it gave him renewed hope, because 
he was old and mm -hmm. his wife was barren. And when we, ta uh, when, uh, we see this in the Quran, it says his, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's praying and praying and for the, a child mm -hmm. because he's afraid about his lineage after him. That they will have no, no heirs. Uh, that that they will have no prophet. They will have uh, no uh, thing, and the people will go astray. Because he was a prophet. Himself, yes, so. because he was from the lineage of prophets, and the prophets were supposed to come through their line. So right. he, when he saw uh, Miriam and saw the miraculous food and drink that she was being given, and the faith and belief that she had, and how beautiful and pure she was that he got re, what you call it, more faith. And right. he kind of like re-energized right. in the idea that miracles do exist. Yes. And so possibly if he prays for offspring, that though, although that would be miraculous because due to his age and his wife's barrenness, that it could actually possibly yes. happen. Exactly. That uh, miracles do happen and he saw it with his own eyes so that he made him uh, stand in prayer and ask for a, a, a son. So we'll be back in a minute line. then to see if he actually did. Just <laughs> okay. a minute, inshallah, we'll be back. Please stay with us, dear viewers. We're back in a minute. The table is a meeting place, a gathering ground the source of sustenance and nourishment. Festivity, safety and satisfaction. A person cooking is a person giving. Even the simplest food is a gift. Years, months, days. Time goes by so fast and we're only left with memories. I wish my life comes with tools, pause, play and rewind, so I could go back to the lovely family gathering. Welcome back, dear viewers. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We are in the middle of a very fascinating story, which is the story of Maryam, the mother of Jesus, or Isa alayhi salam, and her story of her birth and Sister Karen was just telling us about how Miriam was dedicated to the temple. She did her services there. She grew up in a very religious environment. And every time her uncle Zachariah or Zachariah would visit her, he would find her with sustenance. He would find her with food that wasn't common in that season or in that area. And so he, through that, seeing that kind of miracle of her being provided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he got renewed hope in his own dream or in his own wish that he wished for a child because he was old in age and his wife was barren and he was trying to he was trying to continue his lineage right of prophets and priests and you know so so what happened i mean did zachariah then pray for offspring oh yes he was uh, praying for offspring after that and he would stand in prayer and this time an angel came to him and announced the birth of Yahya, which is John the Baptist, mm -hmm. to him. And still, when the angel was there and, and, and told him that he will have a son named Yahya, or John the Baptist, and he was still incredulous. He, he protested, he said, oh, but I'm old, but my wife is barren. Okay, and he still could not believe his good fortune. And he, uh, the angel said, whatever uh, God says be, and it is, okay? Mm -hmm. So he was telling him that this is a creation, uh, a miraculous creation, God can create as he wills. Right. And just, he just has to say be, and it is. Mm -hmm. So this is all before the story of Miriam, if you notice. Here right. is a man, he's old and infertile, his, his wife is also infertile, and yet they are bringing forth, going to bring forth a son. And okay. actually that hope that he, he actually had that courage to make that prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just from a very simple observation of him, his niece was being provided by Allah. He made that observation, decided, no, I'm kind of going to give it a try. 
and see for my own self if I could be possibly making that prayer for a miracle. Definitely, and it's, it is miraculous. And as it is a miracle, you know, uh, the, the, he was tested, or not tested actually, because in the Bible it's called a test or a punishment, but in, in, in uh, the Quran it's called a mercy. So okay, so he's not supposed to talk to anybody for three days as a sign. Uh, so he was fasting from talking. Yes. Well, so if you if you think about uh, fasting during Ramadan, you might try to uh, try fasting from speaking. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's true. Subhanallah, it will be more difficult. Well, inshallah, we're definitely going to have another episode and continue this interesting story, inshallah. But for now, thank you so much for being on this on this uh, episode today, inshallah. And we'll continue this very interesting subject about the very important woman in Islam, Maryam, very honored woman in Islam. So inshallah, we'll be continuing tomorrow or in the future, inshallah. Okay. Thank you so much for coming. It was nice to have you on the show. And dear viewers, thank you for being with us. Please stay with us on the coming episode where we're going to continue our story about Maryam and how she is honored in Islam. Inshallah, enjoy your iftar tonight. Don't forget your taraweeh prayers, inshallah. And we will see you tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.